Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have some great news for you this week. As you may have heard, the federal government uh, has issued a positive memorandum to not enjoin or stop the marijuana regulation models that have passed in Washington and Colorado. We'll have a little bit more about that coming up in our hint news segment. Sitting next to me is my joint host, Mr. Casper Leach. Howdy, Casper. Happy Friday. Standing by in the wings is Mr. Justin Bridges. Hey, Justin. Up, He'll be playing a song soon and a song at the close of the show. Talk about his CD here. And uh, we have some more news clips coming up. So stay tuned as we bring on our infamous Dancing Cannabis Leaves. Feel the force. Just this week, the uh, United States Attorney General, Eric Holder, and the Department of Justice for the United States government have issued a new memorandum about marijuana, saying that uh, the federal government will not enjoin or move forward to stop the states of Washington and Colorado from legally regulating marijuana. This is a momentous watershed moment for our movement. And uh, there's been a lot of media surrounding it uh, all around the world. Uh, just here in Oregon, I did a brief interview uh, last night, and we're going to run that little interview in just a moment. I think they have the video ready now. We'll see. Put them on the spot. The video is not ready. Well, we'll go on with another hip news story, and we'll run it in just a second. First story. Tonight is out of Haifa, Israel. The consumption of cannabis is effective in treating symptoms associated with cancer and conventional anti-cancer therapies such as nausea, weight loss, pain, and fatigue, according to observational study data published in the journal Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Israeli investigators surveyed the use of cannabis on various cancer-related patients in 131 patients over the course of multiple interviews. Cancer symptoms as well as cannabis side effects were documented on a numerical scale from zero to four. According to uh, the authors, they reported, quote, all cancer or anti-cancer treatment related symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, mood disorders, weight loss, anorexia, constipation, sexual function, uh, sleep disorders, itching and pain had significant improved uh, scores. No significant difference was found in the level of inf uh, infections, mouth dryness, cough, shortness of breath, diarrhea, or leukocyte count between the two time interviews. Uh, the researchers concluded, quote, the population of prolonged users in the current study reported significant improvement in all aspects of supportive and palliative oncology care. A slight reduction in the need for opiates and antidepressant drugs was seen in the study group. The improvements in symptoms should push the use of cannabis in the practice of oncology palliative treatment, end quote. The full text of this study, The Medical Necessity for Medicinal Cannabis, Prospective Observational Study Evaluating the Treatment in Cancer Patients on Supportive or Palliative Care, appears in the Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal. We have that film clip now from uh, KGW Television from last evening. We'll be back in just a second. We're back now with the talk box. Joining us tonight is Paul Stanford. He is spearheading the effort in Oregon to get two measures legalizing marijuana on the ballot in 2014. The top of the show, we talked about the Department of Justice basically saying today, you know what? We're hands off on this. I wonder how you feel something like that may impact 
the situation in Oregon trying to get these measures on the ballot? I think it will bolster our efforts. We'll, uh, I was very happy to hear the federal government uh, say they aren't going to try to enjoin the laws in Washington and Colorado. You know, we came close last November than just three percentage points of passing a similar measure here in Oregon. And recent polling shows that we're very likely to win. We've seen over a 15-point shift in favor of legalization since last year. That is, uh, that was actually my next question. So I'm curious then why that shift? What changed in the past year? If it was so close last time, why a 15-point difference? Well, now people can drive across the river and legally use marijuana. From where we're standing right here, you can be over in Vancouver in 10 minutes. Uh, most of the population of the state is in a similar situation. They can be in Washington in less than an hour. And so uh, uh, I think that uh, time's on our side. This ruling, our, our memorandum from the federal government is definitely a step in the right direction. We aren't all the way there yet. It was rather ambiguous in some of its statements. But it's definitely a positive move, and we've been waiting a long time to hear what the federal government was going to do about Washington and Colorado. So this is a, a very good thing that will help our efforts here. Do you think it's a, a case of Oregonians saying, well, Washington thinks it's okay, Colorado thinks it's okay, or do you think it's people saying, hang on, there's money to be made off this and we're going to get left behind? That's at least an argument I've heard made in the past, mm -hmm. that there's a lot of tax money that can be collected off this, and that money will stay in Washington exactly. if it's purchased a lot of, in Washington. A lot of money to be saved in criminal justice as well. You can use those resources more wisely. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, a, a good thing to hear the federal government's going to uh, allow these laws to move forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about the legislature. You're out there collecting these signatures. We're about to launch our petition drive next week. But, next week. You know, if the legislature refers a measure to the ballot. So how could that happen? Walk well, me through that process. Well, the, there's a short session next February, mm -hmm. and there was a bill in this past session, House Bill 3371, that would have regulated the sale of marijuana. Didn't really get out of committee. But there's talk by several legislators, including Floyd Przanski of Eugene and Peter Buckley down in Ashland, saying that uh, they might refer a bill to the, the people next February. And if they do that, we're going to stop our petition drive and uh, defer to the legislature. We're hopeful they will do that. But if they don't, we're ready to put uh, uh, the issue on the ballot next November. Okay. Opponents of legalization, and there are a number of different arguments out there, but I want to talk about the one that's really concerned over addiction, that it is a gateway. Marijuana is a gateway to harder drugs that are not legal. And by legalizing this, you are bringing people one step closer to trying heroin or to trying a harder drug. What do you say to those I, people? I think it's exactly the opposite. With marijuana in the black market, it takes people to... Uh, illegitimate sources to obtain marijuana. Some of those people sell harder drugs. And I think uh, marijuana prohibition is the gateway to the black market and not uh, marijuana's gateway drug. Rather that uh, when we legalize marijuana, that will close the gateway. A lot of adults such as myself won't be tempted to go to a black market uh, uh, dealer to obtain cannabis when we can legally buy it. Very interesting. It'll be um, certainly fascinating to see how this plays out in the future. Thank you for coming down and giving us your perspective. My pleasure. You're very welcome. All right. That was uh, from KGW TV here in Portland last night. Our next hip news story is from Zurich, Switzerland. People who consume cannabis are more likely to be knowledgeable about the substance's health effects than those who abstain from it, according to survey data reported online in the International Journal of Public Health Policy. The researchers at the University of Zurich in Switzerland assessed the health literacy of some 12,000 male subjects. The investigators reported that those subjects who consumed cannabis, alcohol, and tobacco searched for information about substances significantly more often via the internet than abstainers. These subjects also reported better knowledge of the risks associated with substance use and marginally better ability to understand health information than abstainers, the authors found. In particular, subjects who reported consuming cannabis at least once per week were four times more likely to search for health-related information as compared to those who abstain, the study found. The researchers concluded, quote, substance users appear to be more informed and knowledgeable about the risks of substance use than non-users, end quote. The full text of this study, Health Literacy and Substance Use in Young Swiss Men, appears in the International Journal of Public Health Policy. You can find that online. 
Our uh, next story tonight is out of Bozeman, Montana. The passage of medical cannabis laws is associated with a reduction in the public's overall consumption of alcohol and with fewer incidences of alcohol-related traffic fatalities, according to data published in the Journal of Law and Economics. Investigators at Montana State University, the University of Oregon, and University of Colorado assessed data regarding both alcohol consumption and traffic fatality rates for the years 1990 to 2010. The authors wrote, quote, using individual level, level data from the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, or BRFSS, we find that MMLs, or medical marijuana laws, are associated with the decreases in the probability of an individual having consumed alcohol in the past month, binge drinking, and the number of drinks consumed, end quote. The researchers further acknowledge that this general decline in the public's use of alcohol was likely responsible for a parallel decline in the number of alcohol-related traffic fatalities. They wrote, quote, using data from the Federal Fatality Analysis Reporting System for the period 1990 to 2010, we find that traffic fatalities fall by 11 percent in the first full year after legalization. Why does legalizing medical marijuana reduce traffic fatalities? Alcohol consumption appears to play a key role. The legalization of medical marijuana is associated with a 7.2 percent decrease in traffic fatalities in which there is no reported alcohol involvement. But this estimate is not statistically significant at conventional levels. In comparison, the legalization of medical marijuana is associated with a 13.2 percent decrease in fatalities in which at least one driver involved had a positive blood alcohol content level. The negative relationship between legalization of medical marijuana and traffic fatalities involving alcohol lends support to the hypothesis that marijuana and alcohol are substitutes." End quote. The authors concluded, we conclude that alcohol is the likely mechanism through which legalization of medical marijuana reduces traffic fatalities. However, this conclusion does not necessarily imply that driving under the influence of marijuana is safer than driving under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol is often consumed in restaurants and bars, while many states prohibit the use of medical marijuana in public. Marijuana consumption typically takes place at home or in other private locations. Then legalization could reduce traffic fatality simply because marijuana users are less likely to drive while impaired." End quote. The full text of this study, Medical Marijuana Laws, Traffic Fatalities, and Alcohol Consumption, appears online in the Journal of Law and Economics. That's the end of our hip news segment tonight. We're going to jump over to Mr. Justin Bridges. How are you doing, Justin? Doing good. Looking forward to hemp stock next weekend. Yep, we're gearing up for that. That's going to be in Kelly Point Park oh, on yeah. Saturday and Sunday, the oh, yeah. 6th, the 7th and 8th of September. That's right. I'll be playing on September 7th. I got some good people coming on in and also uh, going to be uh, having copies of my album out there. You can also check it out at justinjamesbridges.com. This is the title track for the album. It's called Medication Recreation. Not forget about that THCV Yes, yeah, so these are the things that your body may need To help uh, get rid of your pain or maybe cure your disease So sit back with a sack of the finest trees Roll one up and give your body what you know it needs Cannabis, ganja, marijuana Educate to medicate and recreation No medicine can do Nothing quite like this So please give me my cannabis I'm 
cannabis, ganja, marijuana. Educate to medicate and recreation. No medicine can do nothing quite like this. So please give me my cannabis. I hit that green carpet with all the pot stars At the High Times Cannabis Cup And do you know where you are? Smoking with my friend LK in that VIP And it's time for all dabs I guess I'll take two or three Yes, and then we'll smoke that J And pass along those medibles Have you seen this place? Man, these things are so incredible Just think about it Weed as far as the eye can see So come on and legalize And give the people what they need Cannabis, ganja, marijuana Educate to Medicaid and recreation. No medicine can do nothing quite like this. So please give me my cannabis. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Check me out next week in the Hempstock. All right, thank you, Justin. In fact, this is uh, Justin's new CD. It's called uh, Medication Recreation. It's got some great songs on here. Merry, merry, uh, as the smoke clears, feels like home at the Cannabis Cafe, pain, and of course, the title track, Medication Recreation. You can find it at justinjamesbridges.com. That's justinjamesbridges.com. You'll be back at the end of the song, at the end of the show, another Actually, uh, Jan Sue and oh, okay. uh, John are going to close out the night. Tonight. All right. Well, that's good. So, <laughs> so I, I, I'll discover live <laughs> here on TV. But that's Thank okay. You. No, that's good. That's good. It's better to be correct. <laughs> Welcome, Casper. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. How you been? I have been very busy. I danced around the state of uh, uh, Washington with Willie Nelson last weekend in, in the Seattle area and out in the gorge at the Mary Hill Winery. And uh, then immediately, uh, I heard the first two songs of the set at Mary Hill and headed to the airport and flew to Michigan and uh, saw patients in Detroit and Southfield and Ann Arbor and Kalamazoo, only to fly ba back late Wednesday night, go up to Seattle. Well, I did that interview you saw at 7 o'clock last evening on uh, Channel 8. Then I drove to Seattle, took care of some business up there, and uh, then drove back here. I don't, TV see show. I don't see how you do it. It's pretty crazy sometimes, but uh, there's a method to the madness. But anyway, you've had a great segment on your radio show. Oh, man, where it's been tell me who was on the show here today? Well, we had a guy. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. His name's Ethan Nadelman. I've heard of that guy. Yeah, he's got a little organization called the Drug Policy Foundation. I think is what it's called. Oh, they changed it to the Drug Policy Alliance, of course. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, yeah. And then there was this another guy. Uh, they merged. You know, Ethan ran yeah. the Linda Smith Center. Right. And there was this Drug Policy Foundation founded by Arnold Traybach and Kevin Zeese. And they merged a decade or so to go to become the Drug Policy yeah. Alliance. So you know about them? I've heard of them. That's cool. And then there's this guy named Eric Sterling. Ever hear of him? Heard of him. Groovy little guy. Uh, he hey. was a, a chief of staff for a congressman, and then he attorney and he was founder of uh, the drug policy what is his group criminal, criminal justice, justice policy and he Foundation. also helped write the forfeiture laws in Congress yeah when he was and then after he did that he spent the rest of his life aid. trying to fight against him so we had him on and then we had uh, some guy from uh, vote hemp on he was on today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we had a lady on from Oklahoma normal mm -hmm. and we talked that's a scary place Oklahoma it is that's the one state that I'm staying out of and uh, I'm not going it to was Oklahoma. Weird. It was so weird. They changed because those laws. It was a nice summit. It was a, a solution summit talking about how mm -hmm. to end the war on. And then, as yeah. you heard yesterday, my my bro, uh, my bro man, Terry Holder, you know, hanging out Christmas time. I told you that would change him. And then at Easter, when we got together, I gave him your herb to smoke. And then they started passing it around the DEA. And then Eric started 
I'm on the There's phone. There's a new tune gang in the house. Is really? But saying? no, I'd be on the phone and all of a sudden I'd be talking to him and all of a sudden Eric would just pop in like he was listening uh -huh. and go, can you get me some Paul Stanford weed? And I'd go, end the prohibition and I'll do it. Okay. Finally, they spoke the last of your bud about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They had the press conference yesterday. Eric will right. be at your doorstep Monday morning yeah. for some That's Paul scary. Stanford I'm going to have flashbacks See, there about we are. That. Christmas there time. Is. Oh there man, is. that is so special. So yeah, it's been a good week. So yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Well, you know, we are doing a live show. It is uh, the 30th of August. And if you're watching tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4442. We are taking your calls right up to the top of the hour. So give us a call at 503-288-4442. And listening, you, listening to your, I didn't mean it, but listening to your report, I figured out how to get some money for THCF. How's that? Do a study on people who do studies. Uh huh. Well, we're doing that. Oh, we're studious. Okay. So uh, I'm very excited, as as you can tell. This is how I look when I get excited. I know that uh, the federal government has finally come up out with this. You know, I always anticipated that the federal government would come in and enjoin the first state to regulate marijuana, that the federal government, just like they did with Oregon's death with dignity law. Right. I know I've said it here on this show. Uh, I think tonight's show is either 699 <gasps> or show 700. I'm, I'm not sure which one it is. If well, we'll figure it 699 out. 699 or 700. But, uh, well, like you, when I first saw the news, I thought, well, that's from I the onion. This. I thought I thought it was from the onion. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. it looked like something kind of dry humor that I would write. And then I read it again and I thought, that's not from the onion that's no. that's real and then it started being reported by other news sources and by gosh it seemed like but you know the light came on in their heads they realized overall it's a positive thing and it's going to bolster our efforts to legalize marijuana and hopefully move the federal government to make more significant changes but as i said in that television interview that we showed earlier it was ambiguous in a number of yep. ways in fact at the very end it said it said there are these eight steps that if people follow them and the states follow them, then the federal government will not prosecute you if you're growing large quantities of marijuana and selling it. But then it said at the very end, well, but this doesn't mean we're bound by this and we can still prosecute anybody we want to, even if they are following all these rules. Yeah, it's kind of so like that was the last paragraph of this yeah. memorandum. It's kind of like your mom and dad saying, you're allowed to go to the movie, but we'll still take the car keys away from you and keep you home if we decide to. Yeah, something like that, something like that. But the, the main thing is they did not try to enjoin Washington and Colorado. And so that's a big step forward. Well, as Eric pointed out, it's also uh, good for the Democrats because now it's very obvious where the Democrats are coming from and their platform is. And if you, as Eric said, uh, line yourself up with uh, marijuana prohibition, you're basically lining yourself up with the Obama administration and therefore you get a better chance of getting re you know, elected into I office. I have long said that just as Franklin Delano Roosevelt built the biggest coalition in the history of the Democratic Party when he ended alcohol prohibition in 1933, that whatever Democrat grabs hold of and spearheads the legalization of marijuana stands a chance of, of receiving that sort of political and they benefit as well. Especially when the truth about hemp oil becomes known. You know, we've got a little, our flame of freedom here. It's 100% hemp inside this cup. Uh, that's hemp seed oil and hemp twine. And that's the reason marijuana is illegal. It's all about fuel and fiber. Marijuana prohibition was never really about drugs. That's been a smokescreen. It's always been about fuel and fiber and money and power and the continued centralization of economic and political control. When we end marijuana prohibition and allow industrial hemp to be cultivated without regard to its THC content, but it with regard to the most productive varieties for seed oil, protein and fiber production will change our whole economic system. You know, marijuana prohibition really is not a a, a, an issue about drugs, it's really about social and economic freedom. And so that's what motivates us. Now we are starting to take a phone call. Let's see if that caller's still there. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. Howdy. I'm very interested in your show. I just happened to come by, or sort of look in on it, mm -hmm. and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying I have, it. You know, I have benefited in the past with, with 
with uh, marijuana infused uh, ganache. It's oh. like a little between a half a teaspoon and a teaspoon, and mm-hmm. it is it beats anything else. I mean, uh, any uh, uh, like a opiate. It's just mm-hmm. pain goes away, and, and I have a neurological thing. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's so you're a medical marijuana patient with suffering neurological I am not. pain. No, I'm not because I'm prevented yeah. by my health care. My health care. Oh, well, it sounds like you are kind of in the closet then. Well, no, I I can't do it and, I see. and get out of my health care thing because I belong to a major one. I see. Uh, but I do understand it, and I wish I could it <laughs> because uh, if I well, was a minute. You know, we're working to legalize for... marijuana. You know, they've done it now in Washington and Colorado, and so uh, the federal government's now backed off uh, stopping the regulation, legalization of marijuana to move forward. We're planning on seeing it on the ballot here in Oregon. Uh, we could see it on the ballot in Alaska and California. Pretty soon the whole nation will be legal. I think within, it's safe now to say within five years, marijuana will be legal across the country. And are you taking live, donations I for THCF so that we can raise Well, not signatures? THCF. We, we're, our political organization, CRRH, is, uh, is out working to uh, end marijuana prohibition. We are launching a petition drive next week. And, and there's a way to get find out more health. about it there at CRRH.org. I live very close to 27 and Sandy. I, I will see. stop by. Very good. Thanks for calling. Thank you. you You're sure night. welcome. Thank you. We have another caller, or a couple more callers standing by. Welcome to the show, caller. Uh, I think you're waiting for me. Um, you are correct. We are okay. waiting for you. Welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Um, You're very welcome. I was, um, I'm, my husband is being helped by your clinic. Uh, he has two cancers. And I'm really interested in finding out and getting in touch with uh, someone that could provide him with Rick Simpson oil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do, and he should do you be have using it? that. It's uh, uh, just give us a call at the number that you will find on your screen there, 503-235-4606, and uh, we'll see what we can do to help. There's obviously much greater demand than there is supply, and it takes a lot of good marijuana to make Rick Simpson oil, and especially for a patient who's uh, facing chemotherapy and, and radiation treatment. So, but uh, give us a call and we'll do what we can. All right. Yes. Thanks a lot. Uh, he's he's already been through chemoembolization for liver tumors, and uh, it it was successful at this point, but it has damaged his bile ducts, and so he would not be able to have any more. Uh, should they start growing again or should he develop more? And that's a very real possibility. Well, you know, it was just a few years ago that anyone who was facing a liver transplant was kicked off the transplant list at Oregon Health Sciences University and most uh, medical institutions here in the Northwest. But recently, these uh, institutions have started to change their stance on the use of medical marijuana. And uh, uh, I would recommend that uh, he talk to his nephrologist uh, uh, in coordinating that strategy. Um, yeah, well, he was, he was, um, that, that was a, an option at first until mm-hmm. uh, they discovered that he had tumors in both lobes of the liver. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, when we told them that he was a medical marijuana patient, they said that uh, even to be considered, he would have to uh, right. abstain from medical marijuana for six months. What and hospital was this at? It was at OHSU. At OHSU. All right. Yeah. And then we and when was that? Uh, let's see. We began that journey, I believe, in March. I see. All right. So, but we we let him know in no uncertain terms what. Uh, how good it's been for him, and he's on. He is on pain management, and his pain management doctor is on board with Great. the medical marijuana for Great. him. Unfortunately, uh, there's a long history with a doctor, William Bennett, in the nephrology department at OHSU, who was spearheaded a group called uh, Drug Watch International, along with his wife Sandra Bennett, and they've uh-huh. been active proponents of marijuana legalization on and medical marijuana on an international basis. And so, unfortunately, has a long legacy there in the nephrology department. But it's not just OHSU. 
Uh, there oh, are many God. patients who've been condemned to die because they used medical marijuana to treat their symptoms in regard to failing liver function. Yeah. But uh, I'm sorry to hear your family's caught up in that. Well, he's, he's had chronic uh, problems with p chronic pancreatitis for years. Mm -hmm. And he just is getting to where he can't even eat. And that's his main symptoms right now. He's so far, uh, he's not had a tremendous amount of problems from. Uh, well, you know, from the here in Oregon, thing. our state legislature just enacted a medical marijuana uh, dispensary regulation model, and that allows people to sell their excess cannabis to dispensaries. You know, I have always limited the amount of cannabis I've grown to about a half a plant per patient. And I still have uh, an excess, but because I can grow big uh, plants that produce 10 to 15 pounds. But- oh, I've uh, seen some of your pictures. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, now that we can legally uh, market, you know, with the license next year, I'm planning on growing hundreds of plants outdoors. And with that, I, I should be able to make a lot more of this Rick Simpson oil, you know, really, um, it's, it's very difficult to not be able to meet that demand from patients such as your husband and many others. Right. And so I look forward to the day when they can have access and our science is allowed to fully investigate the oncological uh, benefits of, uh, of cannabis more fully. You know, it's odd because the health and human services of the United States government on one hand, the DEA says marijuana has no medicinal benefit. On the other hand, Health and Human Services has held a patent for marijuana and cannabinoids as anti-tumoral and anti-pain uh, uh, drugs. And right. so it's very strange. It's like I said earlier, marijuana prohibition is not really about drugs. It's really about money, oh, power, absolutely not. and the continued centralization of economic and political control. And marijuana legalization is really about social and economic justice. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, I thank you for your call and explaining your dire circumstance to our audience. And uh, I recommend that you call our office at 503-235-4606. And we'll see what we can do to help you. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Bye. You know that you made the comment about when you have excess marijuana. Yeah, I've been smoking marijuana for 30, 40 years, and I've had two or three pounds in the house before, and never once did I ever think I had excess uh -huh. marijuana. Just, just saying. I understand. Well, we do. Um, wow, we've got more than that. Oh, okay. Um, That's impressive. Anyway. <laughs> um, like I said, one plant produ outdoors produces 10 to 15 pounds if you know what you're doing and you do it right. And she's right. So. I've seen your, your garden, and your garden's amazing. I mean, I you wish take I look forward to being able to grow it in a, a, instead of growing it in an urban environment, uh -huh. in a, a residential neighborhood, which is all we could really well, afford. I really look forward to going to an agricultural environment and the, the loamy, deep, rich topsoil of the Willamette Valley. You take advantage and, uh, of it because you told me when I first moved here that the state does not tell you how tall they can or cannot be or how wide they cannot be. They just tell you how many you ha can have right. and therefore you have the exact I have, number I as have big much as you less. can make them. I have much less. But I, you do, I, you make I them grow huge. about less than one tenth of oh, my, uh, You're the like the miracle grow, grow the marijuana well, movement. No, I, it's easy to do. Oh you know, my there's, well, that's not mine. Look, wow. See, that guy did it. That's an old photo. That's yeah. probably about. See, it's like I'm ready to like climb it and look for a giant but, a uh, harp and a little angel. We have another caller who's been standing by. A couple of them. So let's try to take that call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, yeah. caller. Hey, I'm welcome. From, I'm from Washington State, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm stuck down here in Oregon, and I wanted to go to Astoria tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, do you think I could get some medicine over there with my Washington license for that Amsterdam? festival um i don't know i would say that at the hemp festival they probably cannot distribute that there so if i were you i would just take take your own if you can or uh you know there are um, various medical places in washington though they're hard to find if you're in a rural area uh 
but I wouldn't recommend trying to purchase it there. You know, at our Hempstock Festival, we don't allow the, and I, I'm not directly involved in the one in the story, but I can tell you at our Hempstock Festival, we don't allow the sale of marijuana at our event. Okay. I mean, Thanks it's a fun. public park, so we have to follow the rules imposed and uh, respect the, the city rules for use of public park. Oh, All right. I, I've been there, too. I've noticed that even though you can't sell it, there's thousands of people who freely give it away. There's a lot of smoking going on, there's no doubt. Thanks for your call. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. If uh, you have another question or comment, give us a call at 503-288-4442. Do we have another caller standing by? Let's take that next call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hey, Paul, this is Jules. I'm calling you about a program I watched the other night on the Science Channel 772. Mm -hmm. And the name of the doctor is Dr. Basil Ash, mm -hmm. A-I-S-H. Mm -hmm. And he proceeded to, the show was called Body on Drugs. And he proceeded to say, couldn't say anything really about marijuana, but he said the Carcinians are causing you to get lung cancer. Well, and that's absolutely not true. The, you know, he, I know he obviously doesn't know what he's talking about. I agree. Okay, let, let me just finish here. The guy that um, he told that to said he was born with small lungs. And that cracked me up, and the guy said, I'll never stop smoking it, ever. Mm -hmm. He says, it's keeping me healthy. And I just thought that you should know that this doctor doesn't know <laughs> what he's talking about. Unfortunately, there are way too many doctors like that, you know, and all we can do is try to educate them one at a time. Oh. But I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Okay, I just thought I'd tell you it was on the Science Channel, and if you get, you know, Comcast, you can see it. One other question. Okay. Are you, can anybody in Vancouver view your program? Yeah, it's, it plays on a repeat basis on the local cable access, or you can watch it online or on Ustream.tv. You can watch it live. Ustream.tv. There it is, through the magic yeah. of character graphic generators there it is right. ustream.tv all right and so you can thank watch it anywhere in the world you can watch it live and we do get calls from all over the world at the time all right but thank Thanks you for yours lot. you bet have a good night have okay we have oh we have an audience member call go right ahead rod um i just saw your hemp oil candle burning there it made me think it's very inspirational isn't it it's it's warm it provides illumination just think if you were a caveman or, or running around on the the fields of central europe and suddenly you had this to, to brighten your your hut at night wouldn't that be Little a positive cave. thing so i had a shirt like 20 years ago it said abraham lincoln learned to read by the light of a hemp seed oil lamp yep Yep, yeah, that's probably true. It's true. Yeah. His little log cabin would be lit up with something like that. Yeah. Very good point. It's, uh, you know, people have co-evolved with cannabis over a period of thousands of years. All archaeologists agree that marijuana is the oldest cultivated crop, and its cultivation goes back at least 12,000 years and perhaps over 30,000 years. And its cultivation spread from Central Asia and the high Himalayas to uh, the... Wangha or Yellow River Valley on one side of the Himalayas and to the Mesopotamian Tigris Euphrates valleys on the other side of the uh, Himalayas. On, both of those are cradles of civilization and so uh, civilization itself could have been jump started by cannabis. We have another studio audience question. Go right no, ahead. I, I just wanted to make a comment concerned when the lady was coming in before and you were talking about uh, the marijuana being a more of a social thing and a political thing and this sort of thing. Well, I just wanted to put it in retrospect that in the 80s, there were three counties in the state of Oregon that were using marijuana as a counterproduct to the forest thing and we're making over six hundred thousand dollars a year for the state huh. of Oregon. Well very interesting. Thank you for that perspective. Um, we have another phone caller. Welcome to the show caller. 
Hello. Howdy. Uh, uh, yes, I uh, I was just transferred. Yeah, I, you're live I on the air now. Feedback. I can't. Yeah, don't don't listen to your television. Turn the television down. There's a little I delay the there. Television down. Out. And then just <laughs> listen to me through the telephone. Okay. Uh, that won't distract you as much. I, yeah, I, I was distracted, and I forgot what I was going to ask you. I, well, I, I'll just start off. When I was, uh, I'm 80 years old now, 88, uh -huh. as a Congratulations. matter of fact. Uh, beg your pardon? Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, when I was very young in New Mexico, we lived on a ranch, and I can remember my, my uh, grandparents making this as a, uh, a tea for sickness. Is that possible? Very much so. It was very common, especially in uh, 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 New Mexico and, and Texas and Mexico, and for thousands of years to use cannabis tea and, and cannabis as a, a food and a medicine. Yeah, uh, that's what I remember, and uh, I, I wasn't sure somebody told me, oh, no, I, you know, you just imagined it. No, and, it's true. Uh, well, I, it's you, so you, your memory is accurate, ma'am. I'm proud you that pardon? you can share that with us. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yes. Well, I, uh, I, I, I just remembered that, you know, and I just I didn't realize or I didn't know whether I had just imagined it or whether it was because I was, uh, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm 80 now and I was very little, but I can remember yeah. my grandparents uh, making it for, uh, for the whole family when they were ill. Did they also yeah. use hemp oil to light the lights? I beg your pardon? Did you use the seed oil from that same plant? I have or no did they idea. Grow the plant or I have no idea. No idea. I see. Okay. I have no idea because it was a long time ago, as, sure. you, as you can imagine. I don't even know what it tastes like. I have no idea how you buy it. You don't go to the grocery well, it'll store. Go, it'll be legal in Washington State. It is right now, and sometime in the next year you'll be able to go over to Vancouver and, and pick it up in a store there. And we'll have it legal here in Oregon within the next two years as well. But you if think? you had a medical condition that, that qualifies, then we have doctors who can help you get a medical marijuana permit. You might want to call really? us at 503 Will old age do it? Yes, yeah. it will. Yeah. <laughs> and if you come and it, it helps you live longer. And if you come down to Hempstock <laughs> next weekend, I, you can I'd find like out that. what it tastes like. I so, if you come down to Hempstock next weekend, you can find out what it tastes like, too. Oh, uh, yeah, animals. we have an event in the park at uh, Kelly Point Park, right at the convergence of the Willamette and the mighty Columbia River, the two largest rivers here in the West. It's going to be at Kelly Point I, I Park. I have no idea what you said. Oh. I, I well, there it is. Kind of there double, it is. Uh, uh, you know, uh, but I do want to thank you for your phone call. And watch the rerun tomorrow so you know what we said. All oh, right. Okay. Have a good night. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, there's the Hempstock Festival, and you should be there. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, Paul. Hey. Say, uh, I'm wondering, are your plants budding yet? Mine really aren't doing much no, in you. They're, they're, not yet. Not yet, but that's okay. They will All right. have faith. Okay. I was getting a little nervous. They know nervous. what to do. But I was getting a little nervous. It was so that, no, that no, was they'll, it. they'll start. They're, they're, they're getting ready. It's all okay. keyed to the light cycle. So the longer the daylight, uh, uh, and you know, here in the northern hemisphere, our, our days are a little bit longer the farther north you are, then the longer it takes before they start entering the flower cycle. You know, there's a big long bud cycle in Hawaii if you go there, because their days don't shift as much as ours do here in the northwest. But right. uh, they'll, they'll be showing real soon, and come mid-October, They'll be ready for harvest. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. So we have a little film clip, and I'm gonna we're gonna run that. So uh, this is uh, almost our 700th show. Uh, tonight might be our 700th show, our 699th show. We'll figure it out, you know. Uh, but we have a little clip with Pat Robertson from the 700 Club no. in honor of uh, this momentous event. So stay tuned.
long crime, lock them up, you know. And that's the way these guys ran, and uh, they got elected. But that wasn't the answer. It really isn't working. And, you know, no. these they're, they're now opening in some places faith-based dorms where the women are mm. really being discipled. And, you know, in the end, they're going back out into society, sure. most of them. It's a wonderful opportunity for the church to lead the way for them to have restored lives. And, and you know, that is working. It's a proven t well, commodity. You know, at one time, we had probably the largest prison ministry in America mm -hmm. with CBN, and we did it with video, and the people, the response was huge. Those men and women uh, want to know the Lord, but there's something else we've got to recognize. We're locking up people that take a couple of puffs of marijuana, and, and the, the next thing you know, they got 10 years. They've got mandatory sentences, and these judges just say they throw up their hands and say, nothing we can do is mandatory sentences. We've got to take a look at what we're considering crimes, and uh, that's, that's one of them. I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly for the use of drugs. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I just believe that criminalizing marijuana, criminalizing uh, the possession of a few ounces of, of uh, pot and that kind of thing, thing. I mean, it's just, it's costing us a fortune and it's ruining young people. The young people go into prisons, they come out, they go in as, as uh, youths and they come out as hardened criminals and that's not a good exactly. thing. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, Wendy Griffith. There it is. The 700 Club. I have now been informed that this is actually show 699. This would have been show number 700, but a couple of weeks ago, we had technical difficulty with a pre-recorded show, and so it didn't play. And so this is actually show 699. I was a little surprised. Well, I got all smoked out for no reason. You, we would have done that anyway. So uh, we are still, we've got a studio audience member, a longtime volunteer and, and comrade in arms, Sylvia. Welcome to the show. Hi. Howdy. Uh, I just want to remind all of our viewers that this country was built on growing marijuana. There's a long history throughout the entire world of growing marijuana. And we do need to get back to our roots, just like our presidents did. Amen. I yeah, the first law in the United States back during the, in 1740 or so, was that you had to grow hemp uh, with 10% of your land and you had to give that seed oil and fiber to the British Navy. And that was your taxes, mm -hmm. you know. So the first law uh, about marijuana here in North America required that landowners grow. Yeah, I, I think Uncle Sam's marijuana. been kind of tickled at the idea that we've just been chasing after medical marijuana and uh, recreational use because the real money, as you and I both know, is in fuel, paper fiber, fiber fuel. And once that happens, then we are in direct competition with Exxon and Shell. And I got news for you, Exxon and Shell is going to become obsolete. And so as long as we were running after medical marijuana and recreational use, we completely ignored this hand and the government was very happy. Now that we've taken care of this problem, it's time for the rest of the world to realize that uh, we're going to get caught up. Eric Sterling pointed out today there's like 40 countries globally that are utilizing uh, medical mar I mean, uh, industrial hemp crops and creating all types of great products that we are importing here into our country at billions of dollars in sales. And America needs to just get its foot out of the mud and start putting seeds in that mud instead and start growing industrial hemp as well. All right. Of course, that's going to upset good. the lobbyists because then they're not going to have any money to buy politicians with. But that's another story for another day. It's all about social and yes. economic justice. That's what I've been, we've been saying for, for over a decade on this show now. And so uh, we do have a caller. Let's take one last call here. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, caller. Turn down your TV. And Can I turn the TV down? Yeah. Hi, hi Paul. This is a can of Mike from Alternative Wellness Center. Hey, can of Mike. Hi, Thanks hi. for that can of beer a few weeks ago. That was that was cute. Awesome. I was just uh, uh, letting you know I want to <laughs> invite you out to our pre hemp stock party. Uh, Friday, September 6th, we got Carlton Pride, Charlie Pride's uh, son is going to be uh, here, uh -huh. and we got uh, Justin James Bridges. And, uh, the guy who was just on our show a moment ago. That was a great song. And uh, actually, I got a can of beer waiting for you right down here. <laughs> you know, I'm still show. holding that can of beer you gave me the last time. It's a I big old can of beer. I haven't opened now. it yet, but uh, and, uh, that's okay. Gonna be, uh, I'm saving out. it. 
Well, what's the statue? What? I said I also have Arden Park roots coming out for the pre stock party. All right. Party. They won our uh, contest last year as uh, most popular Facebook voted for band, and therefore, but we're we're proud to have them back at Hipstock here. That's great. Well, thanks for calling, Canna Mike. And you we'll guys have a good you. night. We'll see you at Portland Hipstock. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Well, we're down to just a few minutes left. What do you think, Casper? Can I give a shout out to my website? Go ahead. I've done some major updating to my website. Please go to timeforhemp.com. Now when you go there, we auto load the program that's most current so you can catch the program of the day and find out what's going on there. We've got all kinds of new videos up there and we've also finished the conference that we've been doing every Friday and all those programs will be downloadable there. We're also broadcasting live from timeforhemp.com along with American Freedom Radio and you can go to timeforhemp.com every Monday through Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard which of course is 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard and listen to the program there and also call, of course share us with your friends. Find us in iTunes as always. We've also uh, been launched now onto Tumblr and SoundCloud and a couple of other handheld devices that makes it possible for all the programs now to be downloadable what? into smartphones that have Androids and Microsoft programming. I so. gotta say the, the 11 hours of programming that you produced with your, your uh, seminars here is fantastic. People should listen to that. Thank um, you. And thanks for being the joint host here on Cannabis Common Thank Sense you. as well. Thank and it, I just have two very important things to reiterate. Uh, number one is our Hempstock Festival is coming up next uh, Saturday and Sunday, September 7th and 8th in Portland's Kelly Point Park. We've lined up parking. If you drive out along uh, the Marine Highway uh, directly west from I-5, you'll see liner boards. We've got some free parking spots set up. And uh, if those fill up, then we've got uh, 2,200 spots uh, set up by the Expo Center where you can park for $7 a day. We'll be running buses around, so we recommend you carpool out and uh, come on down to the Hempstock Festival. But perhaps even more important is just before the Hempstock Festival, we plan on launching our petition drive to legalize marijuana with a constitutional amendment petition and a statutory petition. So you can find out more about that at our website at hemp.org. That's H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. I want to thank you folks for watching. We've got Jan Sue Hurst and John Cornett, <laughs> longtime members of our family, ready to play a fantastic song. We want to thank you for watching and help us restore hemp. No more war.